Removing the nuclear fuel rods from the crippled Fukushima Daiichi plant is the next major step toward dismantling the facility. And officials at Japan's nuclear watchdog have just finished their preliminary checks on one of the reactors. Plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company plans to decommission all four damaged reactors. That could take around 40 years. TEPCO workers are preparing to remove more than 1,500 fuel units from a storage pool in the number four reactor. The reactor did not go into meltdown after the 2011 earthquake and tsunami because it was offline. But the building housing it was damaged when hydrogen from another reactor caused an explosion. Officials from the Nuclear Regulation Authority spent two months conducting a preliminary inspection of the reactor and its surrounding structure. They say they found no cause for concern. Starting Wednesday, NRA officials will examine TEPCO's plans for removing the fuel rods. They want to make sure that debris in the pool will not damage the rods, most of which are highly radioactive. TEPCO executives hope to start removing the rods later this month once they get final approval from the NRA. Every year around this time, brokers gather in Osaka for an annual event. An auction of fillets of dried cod is a traditional New Year delicacy in Western Japan. Dealers sold about three tons of the fish at this year's auction. Most of the fillets are made from cod, cod of the northern island of Hokkaido. This year's fillets are great, as they are every year. I'm sure people will enjoy them. Chefs at exclusive restaurants will create dishes using the fish, and shoppers will be able to buy it at department stores and other places in western Japan, starting next month. Well, the issue of mislabeling has left a bitter taste in the mouths of some Japanese consumers. Some who work in the food industry claim their products contained high-quality produce or expensive ingredients when they did not. Scientists have come up with some solutions that could restore confidence. More from NHK World's Hidetoshi Osaka. A company and a research institute have developed a gene testing toolkit to identify high-grade koshihikari rice. Koshihikari is one of the most popular varieties of rice in Japan and an expensive one. That makes it a target for food fraud. Genetic testing usually requires a lot of high-tech equipment, but this toolkit makes the job easy. Major food companies and rice cleaning mills have begun using it. All you have to do is add a reagent to a sample and put it in hot water for 40 minutes. The shininess of the grains shows whether another type of rice has been mixed with koshihikari. We receive requests from manufacturers and retailers for testing food products before they are put on sale. We plan to develop more gene identification kits. Japanese consumers want to know what type of food products they are buying and where they come from. Supermarkets put labels with such information on the food products they sell. That lets consumers judge quality and safety. One business after another has been found guilty of lying about where their products come from. This company has come up with a high-tech solution to the problem of tracing their origin. Samples for testing arrive from all over Japan every day. Some chemical elements found in foods have more than one isotope. The isotope ratio differs subtly depending on the area where food items are produced. The company finds out where food samples come from by comparing their isotope ratios with those of about 80,000 samples collected from around Japan. We have the latitude, longitude and address of each sample collection area. We also take photos of surrounding areas to get to know the field environment. The company has also started doing in-store spot checks. An inspector 
posing as a shopper buys produce at a supermarket. When requested, I go to a restaurant as a customer and take out the dishes. Food distributors, retailers, and producers are using the company's testing service. If someone in a multi-stage distribution system substitutes some food stuff, it erodes confidence in the system. You are not sure you have received exactly what you ordered. An in-store spot test gives you evidence. The need for food inspection is growing as consumer distrust in the food industry increases. Consumers are putting more trust in science than on labels that don't tell the truth about where the food we eat comes from. Kidetoshi Osaka, NHK World. Senior members of Japan's main ruling Liberal Democratic Party are showing some flexibility on a controversial bill. They say they're willing to debate amendments to a law that would increase protection for state secrets. Some opposition lawmakers warn the bill could infringe on the public's right to know. LDP lawmakers want the Diet to pass the bill before the current session ends on December 6. Few opposition parties are totally against the bill, so it is good to hold talks with parties that are eager to have serious discussion. LDP Secretary General Shigeru Ishiba says if the bill is passed, lawmakers should create a panel to monitor the government's conduct. He also says discussions should cover how to require lawmakers on that panel to keep secrets. The bill would allow the heads of government offices to designate information related to national security as classified. Only ministers, vice ministers, parliamentary secretaries and other approved public servants would be able to handle the information. Anyone who leaks it would face up to 10 years in prison. Well, European Union. European food producers are promoting a quality control policy that has implications for consumers in Japan. The food producers have come to Tokyo to show off agricultural specialties covered by strict food labeling standards. Producers showcased a range of foods and drinks protected by a policy that guarantees their quality. The EU issues, the EU issues symbols to certify their place of origin or traditional production process. Items on show included fortified wines from Portugal's Madeira Islands and Bayon Nuham from France. Food labeling has become a major issue in Japan. Several hotels and restaurants have been caught out mislabeling items on their menus. In Europe, uh, the geographical indication products have not only very strict control regarding the safety of food, but also a very strict control regarding the originality of products. The EU wants Japan to use the same food label certifications. The standards would be introduced as part of an economic partnership agreement the two sides are negotiating.
Slowly resisting the little anxiety that's biding its time. I mean, we're pretty fast, but Mother Nature just went. Japan's finance minister Tato Aso has urged U.S. Treasury Secretary Jack Lew to prevent the recurrence of fiscal problems. Lew is visiting Japan for the first time since taking office in February. Aso told Lew that he was relieved that the U.S. avoided default in October. But he pointed out that the nation could face the same situation again next year if the conflict continues in Congress. Aso said he hopes the U.S. will consider the impact a default could have on the global economy and deal with the problem properly. Here's the finance minister, Taro Asso. Remember, everybody's an Asso. Who can forget Taro Asso? <laughs> the biggest Asso in Japan. Who can forget him? He's the finance minister, right? Yes. What an Asso that Asso is. <laughs> well, he's in this headline. Let elderly people, quote, hurry up and die, says Japanese minister. Taro Asso says he would refuse end-of-life care and would feel bad knowing treatment was paid for the, by the government. So he was doing the rounds, selling people on this new budget they have you know, for the new government. Heaven forbid, he said, if you were forced to live on when you want to die, I would wake up feeling increasingly bad knowing the treatment was all being paid for by the government. The problem won't be solved unless you let them hurry up and die. <laughs> The Iranians have also been talking with the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency. They have agreed on a framework for allowing inspectors to visit nuclear facilities. IAEA Chief Yukiya Amano met with Ali Akbar Salehi, the head of Iran's atomic energy organization. They agreed to allow inspectors to visit a heavy water reactor under construction in western Iran and a uranium mine in the south. Western experts fear the Iranians could use the reactor to produce weapons-grade plutonium. Under the agreement, the inspectors will need to get permission from Iranian officials first. Amano and Salehi failed to agree on inspections of a military facility in Pachi near Tehran. IAEA officials suspect the Iranians are using the site to develop nuclear weapons. As I mentioned, uh, access to Pachin is not included uh, in uh, today's um, uh, agreement. But uh, that will be addressed uh, in under subsequent steps under this framework for cooperation. The negotiators will meet next month in Vienna. Survivors of a typhoon that struck the Philippines are facing struggle to find food, water and shelter. And another storm has headed their way, so some are trying to get out. Typhoon Haiyan slammed into the city of Tacloban and nearby towns on Friday. Government officials have confirmed the storm killed more than 1,700 people. But they fear the number of dead may rise above 10,000. Survivors were hit on Tuesday morning with more rain. Many gathered at the airport in Tacloban to try to leave the area. There's nothing here. We need to go somewhere where we can eat, where we can stay, where we can have, to have some shelter. The storm washed out roads and destroyed communication networks. And Philippine military personnel have been challenged to get into some areas. U.S. forces are helping out, delivering relief supplies to those in need. Relief workers from Japan have joined the effort. And government officials from Germany and Australia have sent rescue crews and medical teams. Aid workers with the World Food Program shot this video soon after they arrived in Tacloban. They found piles of debris and streams of survivors leaving with what they could carry. The aid workers are using planes to deliver food and they're trying to establish a network of supply stations in remote areas.